All right, here's the video that some of you have been waiting for. I'm going to give you guys a tour of my Sea Arc Pro Cat 200. I'm going to tell you what I've done to it, the problems I've had out of it. I'm basically going to tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, the first thing I want to talk about briefly is the trailer that I used to tow the boat with. It is a single axle trailer, and I tell you what, this is a heavy boat. I think a dual axle trailer with a braking system would be a better pairing with the Pro Cat 200. Most Pro Cat 200s that I've seen only come with single axle trailers. Now, my truck doesn't have a brake system that would connect to a trailer. The trailering system is pretty much good for what I already have right now. Now there is one really, really good thing about my trailer. It has a 10 year bearing system on it. I don't have to pack the bearings every year on that trailer, which is a really good thing. I really don't like packing bearings every year on trailers. I've done it before in the past. Now I'm going to tell you the story behind me getting this boat. So let me sit down for this one. Now, as some of you already know, I had a 17 foot jet boat. It was a really skinny boat that I had highly modified myself. It was the boat that helped me finish getting a captain's license. And after a few guided fishing trips, I realized that it was just too small to take people out fishing. So I started looking around to see what is out there. What can I get that's bigger that would help me out with my guiding? Now, at first I was talking to a Sea Arc dealership. I was building one of those MVX hulls. It was a 20 foot hull and I was gonna have a console added to it and several other things done to it. And in the middle of those talks, a buddy of mine found a brown ProCat 200 for sale that was about $10,000 off the normal price. Now I should have realized it at the time, but it's like a car dealership. A car dealership will have this one super discounted car to get you on the lot. That car either doesn't exist or it sells really quick. But they have, you know, the comparable car for only $5,000 more that would be perfect for you. It's just a way to get you on the car lot. And I think this boat was that because when I called them, the boat was sold. Now they did have other boats in their inventory. And when I was talking to the salesman, I mentioned my YouTube channel and he knew my channel. He'd seen my videos and he said that he liked my channel. So he would call me back and let me know if he could come up with another deal. And that's when they offered me this boat for the same price as that one that was highly discounted. And so here we are now. I have a Sea Arc Pro Cat 200. I did have to drive about six hours to get this boat from the dealership. And this is a 2018 Sea Arc, but it had never been sold before. I don't know if it was sitting on their lot forever or other lots and just getting transferred around. It was just a brand new boat that had never sold. And it also had 150 horsepower Mercury on the back, which you, you just don't see on Sea Arc boats. They don't really put Mercury's on them. So I don't know how this motor got on this boat. It is a good motor though. My buddy Melton Hill Bill has the exact same motor and he is hitting about 500 hours on his motor now within about a year and a half. It is a workhorse of a motor. Mercury has come a long ways. I know there's a lot of negativity with Mercury, but these newer ones seem to be doing really good. Now, speaking of Mercury, the first mistake that dealership did, or Sea Arc, I, I don't know who did it. The RPM meter that was put in this boat was for a Suzuki, not a Mercury, and it wasn't working. And when I bought this boat, I didn't test drive it, which is kind of my fault, shame on me, right? After all, it is a Sea Arc, and Sea Arcs are supposed to be incredibly good boats. A second problem that I had was my bilge pump for the main live well, it wasn't working either. So two problems on a completely brand new boat. Now, neither problem kept me from fishing in the boat, so I just, I started fishing with it. I started adding the accessories and everything. And then when I got around to it, I took it to a local Sea Arc dealership to have these two items fixed, these two problems fixed under warranty. They put in a new tachometer that works perfectly fine. And they said the bilge pump had no problems, which is kind of funny because they created a problem when they worked on the bilge pump. They said they had taken it out to test it and it was working. And then when they put it back in, they actually forgot to put in the O-ring that is between the bilge pump and the pipe that goes to the live well. So whenever I turned on the bilge pump, it would fill the inside of the boat up with the water. And even with it off, 
it still leaked a lot of water inside the boat. If you check out this video above, you can see where the bilge pump in the boat turned on to push water out of the boat when I was fishing with Ty. Now I did fix that problem with a little bit of help. My buddy Melton Hill Bill came over and we took out the entire back of the boat, the battery tray that's back there, and found the o-ring put the o-ring in and fixed it and there hasn't been a problem ever since this boat is completely dry no water gets in it unless i forget to put the plug in the back which i actually did yesterday and um the bilge pump kept the boat from sinking now that my story is done let me show you some of the modifications that i have actually done to this boat now with this being a catfish boat you have to have rod holders so i installed some monster rod holders on here and this bracket that's below the monster rod holders that came off my jet boat my buddy ty actually made this for the jet boat and i had another buddy cut it and flatten it so it would fit this boat the jet boat had an angle back here and this boat is completely flat and it worked out pretty good the only complaint I have is I have to bend over to get to the rods. I might have to get some of the monster rod holder extenders to make these rod holders just a little bit higher. And as you can see here, I got three Akuma Battle Cats on this side. And three Akuma Battle Cats on this side. There's the good old Mercury 150 horsepower motor. And it does have hydraulic steering on it. Makes it easier to turn and everything. Now they did something here. They put a gas bulb on it and a filter. And I don't think you need it with this Mercury. I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think Billy has this on his boat. I do know there is a fuel filter within the motor itself. So this is just redundancy. Now I do have the cranking battery back here and the only thing it's hooked up to is the motor. I do have a charging cable for a separate charger to just keep it good, a trickle charger. And then three trolling motor batteries. My trolling motor is a 36 volt trolling motor, so you have to have three 12 volt batteries to run it. Now I have the three batteries hooked up to a three bank charger right here to charge all three at the same time. At the end of my fishing trips, I just plug it up to an extension cord. Keeps the batteries nice and charged. Sea Arc put the light pole back here. And I added a fuse box back here. And this main wire right here goes to a battery that's under my console. So I have moved everything, the bilge pumps, the lights, accessories, everything to the battery up front through this fuse block. And right here you can see the recirculating bilge pump for the big live well. The other bilge pump is down in there, really hard to get to. Now that wire goes through this panel right here. And I tell you what, that panel is really, really hard to work with. I had to get another person to help me put that panel back on after I took it back off. Even though it is only three screws holding it in. And that's where all the wiring goes. Which ends up to my battery under my console, which you probably can barely see on the video. Now that battery is hooked up to a one bank charger that's under the console as well. And I plug it into yet another extension cord to keep my accessory battery good. And to be legal on this 20 foot boat, I got my throw cushion I've got some wearable PFDs. These have to be worn to count. And I use these when I'm below a dam. On the left side, I've got the quick access ones, just the normal ones that allow me to not have to wear a PFD unless I'm below a dam. Then I got a paddle, I got a first aid kit, and I just got just random stuff. It's got tools and whatnot in it. Obviously a glove box with more stuff in it. I've got my captain's license in it. Bug spray, suntan lotion. Got my scale, my whisker seeker scale. Giant monster rod holders net, the HD80. It's a really nice net, I like it. Got a little measuring device right here. And I got towels on both sides. 
I got my ram cutting board right here the stack and stow cutting board and a pair of fish grips the team catfish ones my tackle bag with the fish grips transom saver I usually just toss those in the back because I was doing this video real quick I just tossed it in the boat my rig wrap rig pack and here is the giant live well there's even a divider so you can divide it into two sections to use this I have to put that plug in it and then flip the switch to turn on the one bilge that fills it up and once it's full enough I can turn the other bilge on and it has an oxygenator in it that I am not impressed with it does not put out enough bubbles another thing I'm not impressed with is the rod lockers it's like they designed these whoops for bass fishermen I can get the battle cats in there but if I keep putting them in and out and in and out it's just going to rub the epoxy off of the eyes it's that bad the Procat 240 has a longer rod box which I think would work well with my battle cats but this one I don't know what to do with them right now I usually put my skipjack rods in there like the one I just almost dumped in the water now sea arc includes this little pump right here that pumps water through here you attach it to a hose and a sprayer so you can spray down your deck and everything it is a little bit on the weak side And the controls are hidden behind the net here you do get a nice console with this including a horn main power bilge pump accessories anchor and navigation lights the aerator for the main live well get a usb plug you get a 12 volt plug and i added this this is a light switch for the lights that i use to film at night time and they're so bright I had to buy diffusers for them so they wouldn't overpower the GoPro. I've pretty much put ram balls all over this boat. So I could put accessories or anchors. I think I got one back here. No, I don't have one back here. I have one up there where I could modify for a shallow water anchor. Which, as you can see, I've got a six foot kayak anchor, shallow water anchor stick stuffed in the front of the boat i have yet to use this yet this boat has a front live well that i don't ever use i've actually got it cut off i'd like to just remove everything there and turn it into a battery box for my trolling motor and my trolling motor is one of those fancy trolling motors that has spot lock which is what i'm on right now and i can stow it by my remote and then deploy it with a remote. And then just the anchor to hold me in place. Now, instead of going for the 500 to $900 Sea Arc trolling motor mount, I made my own. This is a $20 piece of aluminum that's welded on by a friend and since he's not the best at welding I added bolts as safety these two bolts go all the way through and some of the bolts holding on the bracket go all the way through just in case overall it's been doing really good I've actually rammed this into a tree on accident knocking off the plastics and there's no sign of problems with my self-made bracket up here it's where I keep a throw net, the hose to hose down the boat, an anchor, which I use the Monster Rod Holders anchor, and I got a drift sock in there as well. And I got my Orion cooler. I was using this as a seat on my jet boat, and sometimes I use it as a seat on this boat. But there you have it, Sea Arc Procat 
200. I probably should show you one more little issue on this boat. The windshield. In the winter time, you have this gigantic hole down here for freezing cold air to blow on your legs. I could probably cover that with some kind of tarp or piece of plastic, but for right now it's wide open. I think I forgot to mention what fish finder I have too. I have a Hummingbird Helix 7, and this Helix 7 has been giving me problems as well. I sometimes have to reboot it several times to get the sonar to actually work on it. And I drilled a hole back here. That's where all the wiring goes through. Of course, it goes all the way to the back of the boat, and there's a transducer on the back of the boat. Now, if you guys have any other questions about this boat, please, please leave a comment below, and I'll try my best to answer it. Now, overall, what do I think about this boat? I miss my jet boat a lot. I had something good going on there. I had an idea in my head that came from Ty's boat to build the perfect catfishing rig out of a small boat. And I accomplished exactly what I wanted on that boat, and it worked out really, really well. I wanted to be able to stand right next to the rod holders with them at arm's length. And I just can't do that with this boat unless I get like a bar in front of the live well, which would literally render the whole back deck useless. If I could, I would remove this entire back deck just so I can walk up to the rod holders and have them at arm's length. That boat that I was talking about building with Sea Ark would have been that type of boat. And I would have had a bait tank in it instead of a live well. Basically a bait tank boat like what striper guides use. Which is something you guys might get to see in the future. Because my buddy Melton Hill Bill has a new boat on order. And if I can get the time off, I'm going to go down there with him when he goes to pick it up. And I'll do a travel vlog with it. Which is something that I really don't do. But I'll do it for that boat because I think it's going to be really, really cool. And it's definitely going to make me want one. And yes, I have considered putting this boat up for sale. It is still a good boat, and I'm still going to do guided trips out of it. I'm still going to fish out of it. If I get the chance to build something better than this boat, I will jump all over it. And when I say better than this boat, just the idea that I have in my brain that I used with my jet boat. Now, hopefully I haven't made the boat mad at me, causing me to get skunked more often than normal. I really do want to catch a really, really big catfish in this boat. Now, I want to thank you guys for taking your time out of your day to watch this video. I really, really appreciate it. I know I didn't catch any fish and I wasn't fishing in it. I'm really thinking about doing more gear review videos. So if you think I should do that, leave a comment below or even do this. Hit that thumbs up. If this video gets a whole lot of thumbs up, I will do more gear review videos as off day published videos, which is currently on a Sunday. My main videos currently are being published on Thursdays, the ones where I actually catch fish. At least I try to catch fish. I tell you what, I really do need to put some rods in the water today, see if I can catch something. So thank you again for watching. I'll see you next time.